we carried out the situation and analysis of five LDCs, namely Bangladesh, Cambodia, Burkina Faso, Ethiopia, and Uganda, representing different regions, capacity constraints, and level of vulnerability that these countries face based on secondary research and expert interview. The basic idea was to explore how LDCs can recover from COVID and build forward better with a bottom-up approaches to stimulate green, resilient, and equitable and a just recovery. So we identified pathways to enable LDCs achieve a better growth and development trajectory. So first pathway was to provide effective and adequate social protection through a rights-based approach assuring access to basic services and a decentralized approach to reach the local level effectively. The second pathway is to create a resilient job market by recognizing the informal workers, often addressed as invisible workers as part of the formal economy, with access to rights, minimum wages, decent working conditions, and so on. The third pathway is to improve community livelihoods by supporting community-based collectives, and micro enterprises, particularly those in agriculture and forestry sector. The fourth pathway is to build uh, on social capital through a whole of a society or a whole of a government approach and collaborative structures, which will be important as they reinforce capacity to implement solutions during the recovery process. And underpinning all these four pathways will be the fifth pathway to ensure direct recovery finance reaches the local level. LDCs will need to put social protection at the heart of any recovery strategy. And to do so, they will need to tackle some of the existing challenges. Firstly, to deal with the fragmentation and the duplication they have in their social protection initiatives. The assessments, our assessment shows that even in countries with matured social protection systems like Bangladesh, Uganda, Ethiopia, social safety net schemes are quite fragmented, inefficient, and often fail to reach the most vulnerable. Now in Burkina Faso, although investment in social protection has actually increased, but it again remains very fragmented. The second is to redesign social protection systems to enhance preparedness for future shocks, including climate shocks. And we have evidence from Ethiopia's PNSP program or Uganda TNUSA front flow, which shows that such approaches are also very cost-effective. The third area where they need to invest effort is to address the digital divide to improve targeting and efficiency of social protection program. And I'll just give you the example of Cambodia, where even though the social protection program are quite nascent when COVID struck them, but they made a very efficient use of mobile payment system to reach the most uh, vulnerable quite in time. And finally, aligning social protection schemes with changing demographics we're seeing that most of the LDCs are facing different types of demographic growth and changes in their profile. For example, Cambodia is dealing with an aging, growing population. Uganda at the same time has a very young population. So aligning social protection strategies with this transitioning demographics will be really essential for these countries to stimulate growth. But gender equity will have to be at the core of this demographic transition. LDCs are doing their bit. They have faced issues around economic downturn. Their order flows have reduced. Their own remittances uh, from external sources have reduced. But despite all these issues or challenges that they're facing economically, they have not gone back on their climate commitments. In fact, they have increased their ambitions around climate action. But right now, what developed countries need to do is to support LDCs, realize that climate ambition, and at least be true to their commitment that they made at Paris Agreement of 100 billion per year. So yes, while LDCs are doing their bit, the developed countries also need to step up and come in support for LDCs to realize that resilient, green, and just recovery.